Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. The first chapter of this book talks about inner cities, the growth, the growth of suburbs, and how to plan for new cities. This chapter has three main objectives. Number one, to understand topics related to environment by activating your background knowledge. Two, to apply that knowledge in listening. And the third objective is to use vocabulary related to environment in speaking. The vocabulary log of this chapter include words like crime, inner city, suburb, downtown, commute, revitalize, diversity, community, vacant, attraction, impact, security, mugging, and surroundings. Now, you are going to listen to a lecture talks about cities. After you listen to this lecture, you are required to answer the following questions. Uh, now, as you probably know, U.S. inner cities have been in a bad state for several decades. Uh, they tend to be high crime areas with a lot of vacant buildings and, 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 and so on. Today, we'll talk about how this happened and uh, what is being done about it. Well, first, you can't talk about the decline of the inner cities without looking at the growth of the suburbs, because um, the two are connected. Uh, there was, and uh, still is, a huge demand for suburban housing in the last 30, 40 years or so. So what we've seen all over the country is a lot of development of areas just outside of cities, um, areas that were once farmlands, uh, acres and acres of land just given over to suburban housing. We call it um, suburban sprawl because of the way the houses are uh, kind of spread out all over the countryside. As the suburbs grew, the inner cities declined. Well, you can imagine how this happens. When people move to the suburbs, it's more convenient for them to shop at the shopping malls uh, closer to home. So. The department stores in the downtown area, they don't get as much business, and um, well, maybe eventually they have to close. You see this particularly in small and mid-sized towns. You might have an area that has quite a large population, but the downtown is dead, especially at night. As a result of that, we've had growing crime rates and poverty in downtown areas. So people are afraid to go there at night, and uh, there ends up being less cultural life in these towns. So city planners have been trying to attract people back to the cities. It's become a necessity, really, because you can't keep building suburbs forever, and People don't want to commute two or more hours to get to their jobs. They, they want to come back to live in the cities. But you have to make the conditions right. So, uh, how do you do that? Well, city planners are using an approach called smart growth as a way to plan neighborhoods and revitalize inner cities. I'll explain some of the main characteristics of smart growth. First, smart growth encourages diversity of use. Um, for example, many planners believe now that it's healthy to have some light manufacturing, uh, say bakeries or printing presses, mixed in with retail and residential buildings all together in, in the same area. And uh, one reason to do this is that a street has people in it all day long. You've got the people who work there during the day and um, the people who live there coming back in the evenings. The area is used more. Sidewalks are busy. This makes it possible for stores and restaurants to open up to serve all these people, uh, which in turn encourages more people. And then that makes a neighborhood more attractive. Okay, secondly, you want to have diversity of housing. 
Instead of having streets and streets of identical houses like you have in the suburbs, you would have a mix of mm, single-family homes, townhouses, and apartment buildings that would encourage a wider range of people um, in terms of ages and income levels to live in an area. So people can stay in a community. Um, they can move up to a larger house or move to a smaller house when they get older without leaving the community. Uh, the other big aspect of smart growth is to make it possible for people to walk to schools, public libraries and stores and so on. So you put these things within walking distance of residential neighborhoods. Uh, it's also important to have attractive places outside, places to gather or sit and relax. This brings people out onto the streets, and streets that have people in them are safer streets. When you have safer streets, you have more people wanting to live downtown, and that causes a demand for more housing. And that, in turn, revitalizes inner cities even more. Uh, now, one city where this kind of thing is being done is Pittsburgh. Let's have a look at some photographs that were taken. Okay. After you listen to the lecture, number the topics in the order that, that they are discussed. Here we have four topics. The characteristics of smart growth, the decline of the inner cities, the growth of the suburbs, and the role of city planners. So how about the order these topics have been mentioned? Number one, according to the audio track, the first topic mentioned was the decline of the inner cities. The second topic was the growth of the suburbs. The third topic was the role of city planners. And the last topic was the characteristics of smart growth. Thank you very much and see you next time.